Hey everybody, Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper, and did you know that it is Bullet Journal Day on August 8th? In honor of a system that I've been using for six plus years, I wanted to show you my progression over the last six years using the monthlies from my various Julys. So I'll show you seven Julys, what I've learned from them, and some lessons and some tips that I will share with you if you are on your beginner bullet journal journey. All right, digging into the archives. This is my first July spread. This is about two months into my bullet journal journey. I didn't really click with that monthly log because I didn't fully understand it. So I printed out a grid monthly to use as my overview. And then I had this idea from D at decade 30 where I listed the tasks and the days up at the top, tried it out wasn't working for me. I learned that pretty quickly and just evolved as I went on. And this was in a May Designs insert that I had put inside a traveler's notebook. This was my July of 2016. I got a little bit more into the artsy things and I got a lot better at my lettering. Turns out practice makes better. So I used these stamps from Foxy Fix, RIP, and created my own monthly grid. And I used this more so to track some of the Instagram challenges that I was in rather than any events. I put that in my digital calendar and kind of kept them there for a while. 2017, this was my July page. And I focused mostly on the projects because I was like, oh, I wasn't using that monthly daily log or whatever. So I just wanted to do an overview of the important projects that were going on. If anybody else is in education, July is a really bustling time. So I always need that overview to create that sense of focus. This you can still see is inside the Traveler's Notebook system. I was really into that for a while. In 2018, I switched over to a notebook style. This is in a Leuchtturm in gold. And this was all my July was. I clearly didn't even end up using it or filling it out. So that just goes to show how sometimes you have great intentions, it doesn't always happen. This told me something. What was going on here that I wasn't using it? Was it not serving the right purpose? Did I think about it differently? I obviously have learned since then what a monthly overview and monthly reflection can look like. So it was not in 2018, I'll tell you that created the project hexagons, but I never filled them in. But I did do some fun blending with a Tombow marker. And in, then in 2019, I was using a Clever Fox A5 dot grid notebook. It was pretty great. I brought it with me when I was teaching abroad in Bali and came back to set this July up. I thought the watermelons were super cute. I'm not usually into 4th of July, so the watermelons worked really great for me. These were the project overview things, and I added goals in here. Um, clearly didn't use this very much either. And this is what is pretty consistent for me is that I set this up and use it as an opportunity to think about what those big projects are, but I don't always go back to fill it in. I often keep those in the back of my mind whenever I do my weeklies instead of going back and pulling from the beginning. This was back when I was really into using this as the weekly format and creating Dutch doors to do a weekly and a daily overview. I tried to look for 2020 and I swear I did have a bullet journal then. It's a lime green Archer and Olive notebook and I honestly cannot find where it is. It is distressing me and hopefully I find it soon because it's the only notebook that I do not have. And I swear I used it. Maybe someday I'll be able to show you. We all know 2020 doesn't count. And then lastly, we're bringing it back to July of this year, 2021, my seventh July in the bullet journal system. And now I am in a passion journal. It is an A5 size and I've gotten much more into the artsy stuff, but I've also tuned back in to what the deep purpose is of that monthly log at the beginning of the month. So now I've got a couple more pages that I've added in to the July or monthly overview. I've added these logs back inspired by the bullet journal method and added a few of my own. So this is what it's evolved to. You can see that we really started at the bottom. Now we're here. And I hope that you get to go on the same kind of journey. What did I learn from all this? 
So after bullet journaling for over six years, there's been a lot of things that I've learned and that I will pass off to you if you are beginning your bullet journal journey. One, always know your why. Why are you starting this? Holding on to that while everything is swirling around you, whether it's your own life or all the inspiration that you're seeing on Pinterest, knowing why you started this is going to help anchor you and keep you clear as to what it is that you're doing this for so you can always return to what is going to be working toward that goal. Two, there is, in fact, a bullet journal method. A lot of people say that bullet journaling is whatever you make of it, whatever serves, and it's not quite true. There is, in fact, a set method that was created by writer Carol, and I always tell new people to read the book or watch his YouTube video. There is a whole range of modules that are making up the system, and as long as the spirit of that system is in place, the form changes. But I think a lot of people get caught up in creating the form, what the actual structure looks like versus the spirit behind why it exists and why those things are structured that way. I even fell for that for many years. I thought I was very aware of what the purpose was, but until I read the book, I did not realize just how deep and intentional that this whole process can be and you'll get a lot more out of it. Three, choose your first notebook wisely. You have to pick a notebook that will activate you to use it. Some people have to just use a very cheap whatever is already on their bookshelf so that they don't have to feel the scary barrier to use it. Other people have to buy something just a little bit pretty so that they're invested in the actual process. Sometimes if you know that you're the type of person that's going to get really intimidated by getting a really, really nice journal right away, maybe you want to consider taking the, the first step and doing something that costs a little bit of money before you just dive fully into it because you are going to learn what it is that you like, whether you like soft or hard covers, how many pages, whether you like white pages or off-white pages, how thick of pages that you need for the mediums that you're using. You're going to learn a lot of that in that first month. Four, begin with inspiration, but then deviate from there quickly. A lot of times people do want to add those creative elements. That's how they kind of got introduced to bullet journaling. And so they're going to take in a lot of the Pinterest ideas, the Instagram, really pretty visuals. And I don't blame them. I am one of those too. But begin with some inspiration and then go from there and make it your own. You're going to craft your own path. You're going to find your own style. Sometimes we get discouraged because the things that we do don't look like the inspiration photo we found, but maybe that's the point. Maybe it's something that you're supposed to do for you and not to replicate somebody else. And this also goes back to point number one, knowing why you started, because some people will track things that don't matter to you. Some people will have sections that you don't need. And being able to connect those dots back to why you are bullet journaling will help you clarify that. When you get started, know that it's all going to be what I call a shitty first draft. That's a term that's borrowed from writing, and you just cannot pre-plan enough to where you're going to get 100% accuracy. A lot of people are like, what pages do I put in here? What? How do I set this up? And honey, you got to decide for yourself. You're going to build it on as you go. And a lot of times people are going to draw a layout and the second they're done, hate it because you thought that you th figured out all the things that you need in that layout only to find that in actual practice, it doesn't quite work that way. And that is great. You're learning really quickly. So this first notebook is going to be a lot of rapid experimentation. Embrace it and roll with that. Each layout has something to teach you. Which brings me to number six, which is always to reflect. The reflection part is what drives the bullet journal method. It allows you to look back and grow from what you're seeing from the past so that you can make changes to your future. So as I've done this over the years, I have learned to tune into my own needs and remembering to listen to my own reactions, whether it's resistance to something or I find something really challenging to follow through on, something that I have kept putting off for whatever reason, features of the bullet journal that I'm using or not using, all of that is just continuing to tune back in to what it is that I need versus what the outside is telling me that I need. I think that has been the hardest part about just life in general is that all of these sources outside of us are trying to tell us how to live, how to be more productive, how to be a morning person, how to be even better. And you get to determine what that is. And through the reflection process, you are going to be able to tell the signal from the noise. 
And lastly, I hope that you know you have everything you need to get started. There is no fancy things that you need to get started with the bullet journal method. You just need a notebook and a pen. I think we all have some of those lying around somewhere. And if not, I'm sure someone else does. And just by starting and getting some words on a page might be motivating enough for it to keep going and for you to just experiment, play, learn, grow, and create this own journey for you. It's the only thing I've stuck with for longer than six months, and it's six years going on strong. So I really hope that you get to experience that as well, or at least learn some things that you can import to whatever planning system that you have. So let me know down below. What are your things that you would tell beginning bullet journalists? What are the things that you wish you had heard when you were beginning bullet journaling? Add the comments down below. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, comment, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I will see you in my next video. Bye.